Hollywood blows these days, you know that, you don't watch that stuff anymore. See, the great thing about streaming video services is that there's a, a lower barrier of entry for people who want to create great content. Our friends over at Daily Wire, they're producing movies. The Chosen didn't have to go through some Hollywood executive's office to get the green light. That's a good thing. And by the way, the state of California, they recognize that Hollywood needs some help. So they've offered them tax credits to produce more content in the Golden State. But here's the problem. The state of California is saying, sure, sure, Hollywood will give you a tax credit if you make more movies and TV things here, but, uh, but you have to be more woke. You're not woke enough, says Gavin Newsom. We want diversity, equity, and inclusion on the screen every day. In fact, that's the title of every new movie coming out of Hollywood now, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Seven and eight and in 3D. Joining us now to break this down is the founder of Hollywood and Toto, host of the Hollywood and Toto podcast, author of Virtue Bombs. He's Christian Toto. And, and Christian, virtue does bomb. I mean, when the movie is laden with all of this crap on top of it, it doesn't do well. And yet here they are trying to force Hollywood to do it even more. If at first you don't succeed, you know what the old saying goes. Yeah, it's it's sort of surprising to see that disconnect within the Hollywood community that you push that message. Sometimes we push back by not showing up, but that's what we see across the board. And things you think would be uh, awakening, things would be changing, maybe studios would be pulling back. And I think in some ways they are. I think some of the belt tightening around their budgets are saying, hey, we're going to maybe not approve that show or that show. But there are other measures where, you know, two steps forward. Yeah, but... Look at the, the most successful movie of the year last year was Maverick. How many people said they went to that, they loved it, they recommended it because it didn't try to lecture, because it was just a great entertainment. Hollywood doesn't understand that? Yeah, I, I think I think there's a bubble mentality where they don't, you know, you think that the receipts would be enough to read them and understand what's going on, the tea leaves, as it were. Yeah. But, you know, what do we see the last couple of weeks? Cocaine Bear. A political, goofy, fun, certainly R-rated, a wacky title, but it's doing quite well at the box office. But I think Top Gun Maverick was a real, a real bellwether because it was so apolitical, it was almost political. And I think people really responded to that. It was pure escapism, pure Tom Cruise, the 80s reborn. What could be wrong with that in the box office receipts? Christian, yeah, and, and it got an Oscar nom, although uh, sadly it probably won't win. Uh, you touched on this in your book, Virtue Bombs, and it was actually reinforced with my interview with Andrew Clavin a couple of months ago. Everybody thinks that Hollywood, uh, they just follow the money, right? But they don't, actually. They're okay losing money if they can pat themselves on the back with all this woke virtue. Yeah, it's a great point. It's a show business with an asterisk at this point. <laughs> they want to make money. They love making money. Who doesn't love making money? But they have other different revenue streams coming in where if they take a loss here, they've got other projects and IPs that'll kind of uh, cushion the blow. But I think at some point, even that isn't enough. I think it's why you've seen Netflix and uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. They've been really cutting out some projects. They, you know, they canceled an entire movie. Batgirl was nearly done. Warner Brothers said, nah, I think we're going to put that aside on the shelf and leave it there for a while, probably indefinitely. So it, it's not, it, it can't go on forever. But you're right. Show business will suffer some losses if it's the message they want to share. By the Absolutely. way, the, 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 the thing that started this conversation is this tax credit from the state of California. By the way, California wants to give away some money in tax credit. Give it to the people so that they can afford to go to the movies, for God's sake, instead of giving it to big Hollywood studios. But they're acknowledging a real problem they face, which is film and television is not really a California industry anymore. Most of these things are all made either out of state or up in Canada. Yeah, I don't think people realize how important these tax credits are. It's why Georgia, it's why New Mexico are these massive hubs for production, TV shows and movies as well. Uh, in Canada, I went to, I visited a movie set a few years ago in Canada for a story that was set in the U.S. because it was cheaper there. So when the tax credits come in, the film studios, they follow. And if you kind of tinker with them, they'll they'll listen. They'll understand. Christian sure. Toto, I hate to correct you here, but um, uh, I was told by reliable sources that Georgia and Florida's recent laws having to do with abortion and transgender curricula uh, curriculum in the classroom and voter integrity, that triggered Hollywood to pull all their operations out of those states. They're not making any more movies in Florida and Georgia, right? Or, wait, whatever happened to that? Yeah, it died out. Actually, I remember reading articles in the Hollywood Reporter, one of the main state publications, where they said they just can't get it. They, I mean, they want to say what they want to say and they want to do what they want to do, but it's 
it doesn't really wash because it's it's too affordable. There's too much infrastructure there. So they kind of gave Hollywood a pass for its virtue signaling where the productions will continue as as they were. And it just that's you know, that's so Hollywood it hurts. Disney's not picking up stakes and leaving Florida anytime soon, you're telling me? I don't think so, though Keith Oberman is suggesting that, but I don't think Disney Inc. is going to have him on speed dial. I don't yeah, think. The, the great business mogul mind of Keith Oberman, who I think is still doing his YouTube videos from his one-bedroom apartment in New York. Uh, Christian, uh, as, while we've got you, what do you think is going to happen with the Oscars coming up? Uh, this is award season in Hollywood right now, and they could go one direction. As I mentioned, they've got Maverick there as an option, but they're going to stay woke, aren't they? I would think so. Listen, hiring Jimmy Kimmel, who's a very partisan, a very polarizing figure, was a terrible idea. He's not an unfunny soul, though you might, you might disagree if you see his late night show. But, you know, he is who he is. And that's what Hollywood wants. They don't want to reach out to have the other half of the country that is being ignored. As far as the awards go, you know, everything, everywhere, all at once is winning everything. Yeah, it sure so, is. So you know, part of the, the dultum of Hollywood and Oscar time is that there are so many other award shows. If actor A wins six out of nine best trophies, Chances are he's going to win that trophy on Oscar night. So it takes the fun out of it. It's kind of anticlimactic, yeah. You heard in my intro, I talk about the, the low barrier of entry. And it reminds me of 10 years ago when suddenly anybody can start a podcast. They don't have to worry about getting a job at a radio station. There's no more gatekeepers. You can just sort of plug in a microphone to a computer. And if you've got good content, people will follow. And that's what happened. Sort of mm -hmm. happening now, especially with crowdsourcing, as we saw with The Chosen that I referenced. This really does seem to be a trend and it's taking off. It's a great trend. It's a necessary trend. It's a bit tricky that, listen, there's big tech censorship that kind of steps in the way sometimes. But like you said, The Chosen is one of the biggest properties of the last five years, and it's doing very well. It's not a Hollywood studio production. They even put it in theaters and it made a lot of money. So. That's what people want to see. But I want to see more of that. I think you're seeing that a lot on the comedy front where these comedians, you know, you're not going to see them on late night. They won't be on SNL, but you're going to watch them on, you know, YouTube clips, hear their podcasts, go see them live yeah. and they're crushing it. And they're telling the jokes that others won't tell. That's what matters. And that's why they're important. It's funny. Meredith and I were watching how, you know, the Daily Wire was rolling off their alternative to uh, Hershey candy bars to sort of protest the transgender thing they were doing. And what struck us was the production quality of the announcement, the lighting, the, the cinematography. I, there's a ton of former Hollywood professionals who are now living in Nashville and other states more than willing to bring high end production quality to things like this. Yeah, it's a great sign. I think the Daily Wire is doing almost everything right in that department. And, you know, when you watch their films. They're not hyper political. They're not kind of shoving an agenda down your face. It's just about entertainment and, and maybe a little bit of spirituality kind of intermingled in the story. But they're doing something different. And I think they're drawing a lot of attention in the best of ways. Uh, the name of the book is Virtue Bombs because, well, mm -hmm. virtue does in fact bomb, especially this fake virtue that Hollywood tries to put up there. And his podcast is the Hollywood in Toto podcast, Christian Toto. It's always good to talk uh, cinematography in Hollywood with you, my friend. Thanks for joining us. There's more to come here on O'Connor. I might even do a Broadway segment. How have I not done a Broadway segment yet on this show? The Tony Awards are coming. Look out, jazz hands and all. It's O'Connor tonight on Salem News.